Coming up on today's show, Nissan teases headlight porn ahead of the unveiling of the upcoming next generation Nissan Leaf. An Israeli firm demonstrates an ultra fast charging EV battery, and the world's fastest car around the Nurburgring in Germany is now electric. These stories and more coming next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is funded by the in-stream ads on today's video and by the kind donations of viewers like you. Follow the link at the end of today's video to make a monthly donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign to help keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, May 19th, 2017. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and I'd like to personally thank all of you who sent well wishes to my family this week after my big sister underwent emergency spinal surgery following a relapse of her cancer. It meant a lot to everyone, me especially, and here's to my sister being back to full health as soon as possible. Fast approaching its seventh full year of production, the Nissan Leaf electric car is starting to look seriously outdated and underpowered when compared to the latest generation of new electric cars coming to market. And as those of you who watch the show regularly will know, Nissan is currently working at readying its replacement, the 2018 Nissan Leaf, for an official full market launch this year. So far, we've seen very little for the car, save for a few spy shots, but this week Nissan finally released its first official teaser photo of the next-gen plug-in car. Yes, this is all you're getting, a close-up of the 2018 Leaf's headlights, similar in form to the lights we've seen on some of the spy shots of the prototype Leafs undergoing testing. It reiterates the fact that Nissan is looking for a more mainstream appearance and appeal for its next-generation car. Combine that with what we expect to be more than 200 miles of range per charge, and it's starting to look like this fall is going to be very competitive in terms of the plug-in car marketplace. For years, the diesel engine had formed an important part of Volvo's engine lineup, especially in Europe, where it's traditionally favoured over the petrol engine thanks to its higher gas mileage and low-end torque. But this week, Volvo confirmed that, thanks to the success of Tesla, its current generation of diesel engines would be its last. In its place, Volvo will shift all of its developmental attention to its new modular electrification platform, or MEP for short, allowing it to transition to killing the diesel engine completely by 2023 and hitting a total of 1 million electrified Volvo cars on the road by 2025. Like other automakers, though, Volvo has some catching up to do if it really well and truly wants that transition to happen. So watch this space to see if it succeeds or not. When it comes to transforming the way we travel in the future, Elon Musk has a fair bit of skin in the game as CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, not to mention the person widely credited for making the weird thing that traveling at supersonic speeds in an enclosed tubes was a really good idea. And of course, we mustn't forget about the boring company, Musk's latest transportation venture that seeks to ease congestion in major cities by transporting cars underground at speeds in excess of 125 miles per hour. 200 kph. Well, this week, following the release of a CGI rendering at the start of May of what it might be like to travel using a boring company tunnel, Musk published a short Instagram video showing the first prototype vehicle sled making its way along a scale tunnel that's being used for both Hyperloop and boring company test vehicles. Accelerating to the cradle's top speed quickly and safely, the video shows that the boring company is certainly more than just an idea. But there's still no telling as to when we'll see the first commercial application of this technology. If being shot down a tunnel on an electric sled isn't your thing, perhaps the Electromechanica Solo will be. Designed as an efficient, single-seat, safer alternative to a motorcycle, the Electromechanica Solo has been in development for a number of years and was meant to actually launch last year, but for various reasons it didn't. Well, this week we heard the news that the firm, which is now based in Canada, is undergoing the final few federal certification steps needed to allow the Solo to be sold in North America, with the company saying that the 500 or so people who've paid a deposit on their Solo should begin to see them delivered in the next few weeks or so. But at 15,000 US dollars, it's not clear who will buy one. Yes, they're cute, they're quirky, but I think they're just a little too expensive to replace a regular car right now. While most electric car drivers will tell you that current rapid charging technology, be it Chademo, CCS, or Tesla's supercharger standard, is fast enough to refuel their cars on a long trip, 
since the car is often full before they are, many who don't yet own an electric car view charging speed as a major hurdle to overcome before they'll even consider trading in their petrol car. Well, this week, Israeli firm Stordot held a live demonstration at the Cube Tech Fair in Berlin of its patented battery technology, which makes use of a proprietary organic compound to make it possible for battery cells to charge at unimaginable rates. How fast is fast? Well, Stordot says the technology can recharge a 300-mile battery pack to full in five minutes, which blows every other battery tech out of the water. The issue? It's not production ready yet, and the live demonstration given only shows the battery charging from empty to 60% before ending, something that took about three minutes while the cell temperature visibly rose. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible. StoreDot does have plenty of investors, but going from laboratory to production is a tough transition for any tech company. So let's hope this one is successful. It's no secret that Toyota has little interest in electric cars, killing the production of not one but two generations of RAV4 EVs and doing everything it can in recent years to derail the progress of plug-in cars in preference to promoting hydrogen fuel cell and hybrid vehicle technology instead. In recent months, that's lessened a little as Toyota has come to terms with the fact that some electric vehicles will exist in its lineup of the future. But this week, an automotive news interview with Toyota CEO Akido Toyoda made it clear that he really doesn't feel electric cars can cut the mustard. After being presented with an all-electric Toyota 86 sports car, Toyota seemed pretty nonplussed, noting that they'll cost more money to produce and may lack driving excitement. Of course, we're talking about the same guy who had a bromance with Tesla CEO Elon Musk way back when Toyota invested in the California company in exchange for help with its second generation RAV4 EV. So we're not sure quite what went wrong. Oh well, Toyota's fate lies with its own business plan and only time will tell if that plan will pay off or not. If you felt a little astounded we've got halfway through this week's show without a Tesla story, this next one is for you. And as it happens, it's the only Tesla story this week. You see, this week we heard that Tesla boss Elon Musk has fired the head of Grohmann Engineering, the German automotive robotics engineering firm it acquired recently ahead of Model 3 launch. Because of the misgivings the executive had over existing contracts, Tesla recently cancelled with rival automakers BMW, Audi and Volkswagen. There's no news who will take up the new role yet, but this isn't the first time we've heard of people leaving because of ideological or personal differences with the Tesla CEO. Usually, when a new car launches, you'll see it pitted against its rivals in a to-the-death shootout. But this week, we learned about the Straight Pipe's recent road trip, head-to-head, -head, in which the two contenders were both Hyundai Ionics, but one was electric and one was hybrid. Following a 621-mile trip from Toronto to Ottawa in Canada, the hybrid Ionic wins when it comes to overall range, but the reviewers quickly decide that the Ionic EV is a better car, despite its limited range, gaining praise for the usable, adjustable, regenerative braking and the sport mode. It's a fun, honest review that isn't the usual YouTube hatchet job, so you should check it out after this show. If you've been around in the electric vehicle world long enough, you'll remember the Fisker Karma, a luxury four-seat range-extended sports coupe that, initially at least, tried to take on the Tesla Model S in the luxury plug-in marketplace. Having declared bankruptcy in 2013, the car disappeared from the marketplace, but now it's back, courtesy of the Karma Rivero. The Karma Rivero, which began customer deliveries this week, might share its design with the original Fisker Karma, but it has been completely revamped in order to improve its handling, efficiency, and even the interior to make it more appealing to modern customers. Sure, it's still expensive, 130,000 US dollars to be exact, but if you like the design of the original car, it might be a vehicle to check out. If writing a six-figure check for a car isn't a big deal for you, of course, that is. The Karma Rivero might be out of the price range of most, but this week Ford is making it known that its first mass-produced electric car will most certainly be aimed at a more mainstream audience. What's more, said Ford CTO Raj Nair this week, it'll come with at least a 300-mile, 480-kilometer range per charge. Talking with Business Insider, Nair said that Ford's first mass market from the ground up electric vehicle, a, a plug-in CUV, will be fully competitive in the electric vehicle and mainstream vehicle marketplaces, adding that it needs to make it sure that it hits affordability targets, otherwise electric vehicles will stay as niche or pure luxury vehicles. 
Ford is certainly talking the talk, but given its lackluster interest in electric cars to date, including the Ford Focus EV, I've yet to be convinced. How about you? When Tesla announced that it would offer brand new next generation battery pack upgrades for its original two seat Roadster sports car, it boasted that the new higher capacity battery packs would make it possible for customers to travel nonstop without charging from San Francisco to Los Angeles, making the Roadster the first and only plug in vehicle to make that trip possible. But this week we heard that Lightning Motorcycle CEO Richard Hatfield is eager for Lightning Motorcycles to be the first and only plug in electric motorcycle manufacturer to repeat that feat, traveling in between the two cities without needing to stop for electricity. Sadly, there's a catch. The run will be made on a Lightning motorcycle fitted with a prototype lithium ion battery pack that you won't be able to buy anytime soon. But hey, given how Lightning's current motorcycle is a super bike, not a dual sport or a tourer, I think 400 miles is far more than I'd comfortably want to ride it in a day. When it comes to improving the range of an electric car, adding a larger, more energy dense battery pack has been the go to solution, along with faster, more powerful charging systems designed to pump as much energy back into a battery pack as possible without damaging the car. But in recent years, we've seen another solution come into view dynamic wireless charging, a system where you can wirelessly recharge your car's battery pack by driving along a special lane of the highway. So far, this vision has remained the preserved of laboratories, but this week we saw a real-life demonstration courtesy of a partnership between Renault and Qualcomm, in which a specially prepared Renault Kangoo ZE demonstrated that 20 kilowatt wireless inductive charging is possible while driving down a 100 meter test track fitted with the other half of the system. While the power transfer level isn't DC quick charging power levels yet, it does set the groundwork for a future system where power could be transferred at a higher rate, powering the car and recharging its battery pack at the same time. And finally, Open to the public, the Nürburgring Norderschleife in Germany, known as the Green Hell by locals, is one of the most demanding race courses in the world and has become the standard go-to track for automakers keen to prove that high performance cars have what it takes to set the fastest possible time on the 12.9 mile course. Well, this week we heard that the EP9, the one megawatt limited production electric sports car from Chinese electric car startup NIO, set a new lap record of six minutes and 45.9 seconds. That record not only makes it the fastest electric car on the course, but the fastest car period, beating gasoline cars like the Radical SR8 LM, Lamborghini Huracan Performante, and the Porsche 918 Spyder. Well done to those involved, and here's to further record setting on that iconic racetrack. And on that happy note, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Visit transportevolve.com for more cleaner, greener, safer, and smarter transportation news, or join in the conversation on Twitter at Transport Evolved. And if you liked what you saw today and want to help us make more shows like this, please consider making a donation to our Patreon crowdfunding campaign. There's a link in the description below and one at the end of today's show. Thanks again for joining me. And as always, I'll be back with another show next week. No, dear. No, you, you won't be here next um, week, dear. No, no, dear. No. No. Apparently, <laughs> I, 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 I won't be back next. You, you're Wait. helping me with a convention, remember, dear? A convention, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, Queenie. Yeah. But I've. Uh, this is my main show, and I've. I need to say goodbye. Okay? Well, well, get on with it, yes, then. Yes, well, as I've been reminded. Hey, uh, don't forget about me. Hey, mom. No, no I, Jimmy, I. <laughs> I yeah. won't forget about you either, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, uh -huh. yes, I'm off next week having fun with these two. So thanks again for joining me. I'll see you in two weeks. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. That was 10. Have a great weekend. And until next time, Bye. keep evolving. Bye.